Both Don and Sue look like the kind of people you'd like to know, don't they? Of course, right now, they're dressed for their Friday dates. But don't you have the feeling that they're always well-groomed? Howdy, everyone. I'm John Kennefick, Old Man New Art. Welcome to my channel where I focus on expanding confidence, creativity, and career. Today we're talking about 10 techniques to spark your creativity. But before we start, I want to address the myth of creativity. Now, creativity isn't a gift that you either have or you don't, and when people say that they're not creative, it's just that their definition of creativity is just a little too narrow. Our society tends to believe that creativity almost exclusively lives in what we refer to as the arts but everyone has the potential for creativity. The late creativity author, Sir Ken Robinson said, creativity is the process of having original ideas that have value. It's a process, not a final event. That's what all creatives gravitate to, new effective processes. So, it's a nice segue, let's take a look at 10. Number one, be curious. While I've said that there are no God-given gifts related to creativity, I would say that curiosity comes pretty close. If it's not there initially, it's usually the hardest to cultivate. Now you may be thinking that if this falls more into a personality trait, what's it doing on the list? Well, no matter how present curiosity naturally lives in your approach, Look to find other ways for you to stretch your knowledge and skills surrounding your art. A good place to start is if you have a favorite artist. Learn who their favorite artist is and then branch out from there. And although comparing your work to others to gauge your artistic worth is a big no-no, how other artists approach their craft can be very inspirational. Two, tune into your body. I know that we usually don't hear this mentioned much around creativity, but just like an athlete, knowing what your body needs and when it needs it will double your creative output. Listen to your body's rhythm for your most creative, energetic times as it relates to sleep, eating, and exercise. And listen, if some of you younger folks skip over this section, I understand it. I probably would have too a few years ago. Who needs sleep? But with age, this all becomes too real. Number three, tune into your space. This one looks as different as every one of us. Your space could be a beautiful studio or a desk beside a bed or even a sketchbook balanced on your knees. Home is home. So take the time to make your space reflect what made you want to create art in the first place. Connecting to an atmosphere conducive to freeing yourself from outside distractions can help you to create some of your best work. Number four, find your concepts. Being objective about our work is essential, but we often equate artistry solely with technique, the end result. It's very easy to see a style of art that we want to emulate and become laser focused on the visual aspect without appreciating what a piece is trying to say. We all have our sketchbook within reach, but as artists of any medium, our mental sketches could be phrases or ideas that we want to explore and then assign the medium after. Remember, everything serves our concepts. Number five, drill and flip your technique. So now, contradicting everything that I just said, practicing the technical side is important to keep up and improve so it can be of constant service to the creative. There's nothing more frustrating for an artist that has a vision and not being able to carry it through. With focused repetition in any field, we need to center our drills on those frustrating areas that create barriers to our next level. And one of my favorite drills, uh, which is very simple and, and very effective, is drawing from an upside down reference. When you do this, your image will lose its context, stopping you from subconsciously filling in what your memory associated eye draws from, and you'll begin drawing from what you actually see. Composing anything that varies your established compass will put an unnerving and exciting spin on your work. Number six, vary your approach. These are all the fun things that we get to do out of the routine of our creativity. When I mentor students, we do this for weeks at a time. And most of these approaches are exercises and opposites. 
um, recompose your final image from horizontal to vertical, re-render a file from color to black and white, or, or, or take the last sentence of your short story as the opening line to your new work. Just like flipping your reference image, we're doing the same thing with our perceptions. In addition to the 180 degree approach, take a sidestep from analog to digital and vice versa. Also, dusting off and revisiting shelved ideas is a nice test to see if a little distance and mindset can bring old concepts to life with a different approach. And lastly, let your work take on a life of its own. Of course, this doesn't mean experimenting on your client's dime, but in your own work. Don't be so rigid about the end result. Often growing a work organically can get you to a great place. Number seven, take inspiration from everywhere. Expanding where we get our inspiration from is important. Now, images, movies, books, music, and nature all fill our creative tank, and we've all heard this before. But sometimes our reference and our inspiration is too on the nose. So look for inspiration in everything that you do. I remember once trying to get inspiration for a piece of art that I was creating. I had a brief to create a poster that looked like a vintage magazine cover that highlighted fashion and pets. So I gathered literal reference uh, of art to get me started, but nothing was coming because I had too much of a narrow approach to what I wanted to do and chose reference images that back my initial ideas. Very straightforward and as I said, on the nose. So I was stuck. And I think it was after the first or second night of uninspired sketches, I took a break and I happened to watch the Dino Risi movie, Il Surpasso. It, it's a great road trip movie, but anyway. During the opening credits, the main character, Bruno, is driving through the streets of a deserted Rome, and that scene stayed with me, something that I couldn't necessarily explain. And when I went back to work on the concepts the next day, without fully realizing what I was doing, I think I pulled from the atmosphere of the opening scene and the feeling of the empty streets, the loneliness, um, instead of the more direct reference that I was using to that point, and I created this. To what degree my inspiration can be seen is subjective, maybe only in the empty street, but I don't think I would have gotten here if I had just been tied to my initial, very literal reference. It's nice when these things happen. Always challenge and almost always throw out your first ideas. More on that later. Number eight, explore the edges of what you do. When you explore other interests to get a new perspective outside your work, you of course uh, are vulnerable, which is often when you'll see a different side of your creativity emerge. Now, I agree with this wholeheartedly, but I would be lying if I said that I did this. I don't and I can't. I never like to get too far away from what I do and that's something that I'm working on, but just hear me out for a second. What I do is I learn as much as I can about other related fields. It allows me to be more well-rounded and to communicate more effectively with other creatives. And yes, it, it actually does increase my creativity and it helps me to see my art from a different perspective. At its most basic, my interest with VFX exposes, of course, my limitations in doing what experts do. But by simply learning their language, I'm able to get so much more out of my collaborations with them. At its best, my art directing photo and video shoots has opened up my passion for cinematography, which has since become a big part of my business. Number nine, take it out of the studio. If we listen to most studies that center on R&D and innovation, researchers will tell us that most new ideas are bad. And for that very reason, we need feedback. Whether we operate as freelancers or in a fully staffed studio, we sometimes feel like we're working in the vacuum of our own ideas. So vetting our ideas to trusted sources helps us to grow our skills and creativity and collaboration while giving us thicker skin and perhaps even giving us access to honest, helpful critique, saving us from time that we might have spent on a mullet of an idea. Number 10, have your bags packed. All the tips to this point are suggestions for things you can do, but this one works in a different way. The Taoist concept of Wu Wei was first described as do that which consists in taking no action 
and order will prevail. The idea is that we should stop trying to force action and get more comfortable doing less. It's also described as being like water that doesn't fight against obstacles, but gracefully moves around them. So this works for your career and your sanity. As long as you know that it doesn't mean we do absolutely nothing, it simply means that we don't force things to happen. Creative ideas and opportunities will present themselves as long as we're ready to move forward when the time comes. And that's it. That's my 10 creative spark starters. If there's something that I missed, please let me know in the comments and please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss one minute of my rambling. And I wanna leave you with the famous words of French philosopher Albert Camus who said, all great deeds and all great thoughts have a ridiculous beginning. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.